What's up guys and gals? Iceman here. So what you have before you now are two absolutely horrifying bear attack stories told by me. But before I get into it, I'd like to thank you all for your support on this channel. And if you will, like this video and let's get into these chilling tales. Covered in red oil, the bear wrapped its jaws around Jonathan's face, pulling and pulling with all its might. Its towering body lay heavy on John's helpless carcass. John pulled at the bear's hide, digging his nails into its neck to no avail. It only seemed to intensify the brutal mauling. Blinded by the cloud, John knew his last form of defense was futile. He missed its face and sprayed against the wind. The chemical came right back to him, moments before the angry bear took him down. What's up guys, Iceman here. So this story is about a couple from Michigan who got attacked by a freaking black bear. It was a brutal mauling and I'm looking forward to going over it with you guys. But I'd first off like to thank you for all your generous support on this channel. And if you want to help me out, you can hit the like button and subscribe to the page and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. You can also become a patron or a channel member. Links in the description below. But before I bore you with these bearing details, let's get into this bear of a story. John and Melanie were avid outdoors people. They loved nature and loved animals. In their late 30s, they decided against having children. John had a computer repair business that he ran from home, and Melanie would sell things she would make by hand online. They both decided that their lifestyle was too busy for children, and John was always a cheap wad, which was another variable. They had pets to keep them company, a small terrier and a cockatoo. They'd bring in rescue animals, often mending their ailments and freeing them back into the wild later. They had a sort of fascination with the wild, and in particular, bears, which is partly what led them to embark on a purchase of 80 acres of land in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. John's late uncle had owned a cabin in the area, and John had fond memories of visiting when he was a child. He remembered seeing massive black bears at a local ice cream shop, only meters away from where the picnic table sat, rummaging through the shop's dumpsters. He recalled seeing four to five bears at once, some very large, maybe up to 800 pounds, likely due to their unusual diet. There are an estimated 10,700 black bears in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The population has greatly increased in the last decade, and human bear incidents are becoming increasingly common. Diverse forests, with some clearings, supporting a variety of fruit and nut-producing shrubs, are the habitats favored by black bears. During the fall, as the bears prepare for their long period of winter torpor, they enter a phase known as hyperphagia, where they eat up to 20,000 calories per day and pursue food for more than 20 hours at a time. In more populated areas, black bears are commonly seen eating the fattening seeds left at feeders for birds. Suet blocks, the high-fat bird seed cakes, are prized by roving black bears as concentrated sources of nourishment. A bear can smell suet more than a mile away. When meeting a black bear, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources advises to never run, but slowly back away from the bear. If necessary, raise your arms to look larger and shout to intimidate the bear. If necessary, against a black bear, you should try to fight back. John and Melanie's first trip out to the newly purchased land was an exciting day for both of them. The drive was long and tedious, hauling a pull behind for the 10 hour journey crossing the Great Mackinac Bridge and venturing into the vast unknown. The land had a small unfinished cabin. For now, they intended to sleep in their trailer and get a feel for the new lot of land, to enjoy nature and venture around the nearby towns, maybe gather some local wildlife information and get to know the locals. This is just what we've dreamed of, Melanie stated with glee as they pulled onto the easement. The two-track driveway was long and overgrown with grass, they could hear the birds chirping and saw some deer on their way in. A very secluded area, just what they were looking for. They made use of the fire pit that night, had a nice evening in the late September wilderness. Melanie saw something in the distance in her peripheral vision, something large and black, some movement. 
The fire was beginning to dim, and they had a hard time making out what it was. Possibly a moose, or maybe a black bear, but it seemed quite large. They began packing up to call it a night, and again they noticed something, this time crossing between them and the camper, which was about 40 feet away. It stopped for a moment, but kept moving, something stalking them. John yelled into the night toward the dark shape. Hey! He shouted. No response. Again, the creature faded into the darkness. They rushed back to their trailer and slammed the door behind them. Several days passed with no incident, no sign of the creature. They discovered tracks in the dirt surrounding their fire pit and figured it was just a curious bear looking for scraps. They started working on their cabin in the following days, getting more and more comfortable on their new lot of land, but made sure to carry the bear spray with them everywhere they went. It wasn't until the fourth evening that another incident occurred. Melanie was showering in the camper while John was chopping firewood at the cusp of darkness. His palms sweaty from the exhausting labor. He took a break and walked over to the forest edge to relieve himself. He turned back to return to his chopping when he noticed a creature at the corner of his eye near where his ax lay. The curious bear seemed unfazed by him as it nosed the ground and snuffed around the sight. John did the one thing you don't want to do upon the sight of a bear. He ran. The bear instantly darted after him as he fumbled with his pepper spray, trying to unlatch it from his belt. Camper in sight, John felt a massive blow to his lower legs as the bear tackled him to the ground from behind. He screamed in agony as he kicked and shook. The bear then wrapping its jaws around his lower back and thrusting him around like a pit bull. John had the pepper spray in his left hand and began spraying with little hesitation. I couldn't think clearly. I just wanted it off of me, John said about the incident. The red thick mist spewed out of the aerosol can, dousing the surrounding area along with John himself. The bear continued to shake him as he was spraying and the intense action only seemed to make things worse. The spray never got onto the bear's face, but only its torso and underbelly. John, on the other hand, had it all over himself. He emptied the can completely, and the bear snorted and huffed over the gas, but then lurched on top of John and began digging into him with its sharp, bacteria-filled claws. Melanie heard the screams over the sound of the small camper shower, heart beating in her throat. She threw on her bathrobe and ran outside barefoot. Thirty feet ahead of her, she could see the gruesome sight of the red and black bear tearing apart what seemed to be a man. I was terrified, but I knew it was my husband, and there was no time to think. I could see the axe notched in the logs he was chopping, so in my bare feet and towel I ran to it and ripped it out. A crazy sensation of fear and terror and imminency came over me, and without planning it, I charged the bear, yelling profanities. The bear, upon seeing the angry charge, released John. It hesitated for a moment, as if weighing his options. Quickly, the bear decided to make his escape to the nearby brush. Melanie dropped the axe and ran to her husband, hugging him tightly while helping him sit up, getting some of the red irritant film on her as well. Melanie drove John to the nearest urgent care facility, which was a 45-minute drive from their cabin. By the time they'd arrived, John was in good spirits and optimistic about his recovery. Although in significant pain, he had relatively minor wounds. While waiting in the ER, he got online and ordered a boomstick to be delivered to a local dealer. Jeez, what do you guys think about that story? You know, thank goodness that John ended up ordering a boomstick at the end because I couldn't help but wonder where the heck were the boomsticks at? And what are you doing chopping wood at dusk without protection? Now, I feel like I've read stuff on the internet about how some bears are actually attracted to pepper spray. Like if it's on the ground in an area, they might sniff around it and lick it up or something. But of course, if used properly, in general it does a pretty good job. But this is just one example 
of how things can still go haywire. Black bears are certainly a force to be reckoned with, and I would never underestimate one personally. I feel like if I were out in such country, I'd have like a 44 or a 357, if you know what I mean. But fortunately, this couple did okay. But let me know your thoughts on this situation. What do you think could have been done differently to prevent it? And have you ever had an encounter with a bear yourself? Let me know in the comments below and like this video if you will, for more chilling tales from the Iceman. It's fine, Leah told the startled couple, whose tent lay only ten feet away from her own, on that quiet, still night of July 6, 2021. It huffed at my head a little bit, but I was able to shoo it off without any issue. He's probably just looking for treats. It's fine. The eerily confident last words of Leah Loken regarding a 417-pound grizzly bear Bruin who stuck its nose into her tent at around 10 p.m. The couple hesitantly zipped back up their tent. The dark, mysterious night wasn't finished yet with its evil mischief. What's up, guys? Iceman here. So it almost pains me to bring this story to your attention, but I think it's important for all of us to know and realize how this situation came about. But yeah, this lady was mauled to death in 2021 in what would be one of the most horrific grizzly bear attack incidents in modern history. But before I get into it, I'd like to thank you guys for all your support on this channel. And if you want to help me out, you could like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the page, and hit the bell so you're notified next time I post a video. And if you want to support me further, you can become a channel member or a patron. Links in the description below. But let's get into this harrowing tale. Leah Loken was a beautiful woman with her whole life ahead of her. Cycling was one of her daily activities, which is why she embarked on this Western Montana adventure. It's important, while camping in grizzly bear country, to keep food and toiletries out of tents, properly store unattended food, toiletries, and other human attractants in a certified bear-resistant container or hard-sided vehicle. Dispose of garbage in provided bear-resistant containers. Otherwise, take it with you and dispose of it properly elsewhere. And for residents in the area, it is advised to not tolerate the presence of bears near your residence. Chase them away at every opportunity. Never feed wildlife, especially bears. Bears that become food conditioned lose their natural foraging behavior and pose a threat to human safety. Miss Leah Loken from Chico, California was killed by grizzly bear at a campground in Ovando, Montana, on July 6, 2021. Miss Loken had been on a multi-day bicycle trip through Montana with her sister and their friend. They rode into Ovando on July 5th to stay the night. Miss Loken decided to camp behind the museum next to Kim and Joel Cole, acquaintances they had met along the ride. At approximately 3.08 a.m., Miss Loken and the Coles were awoken by a bear near their tents. They all got up and made noise, and the bear left the area. At that time, Miss Lokan moved food, packaged snack foods, and dried lentils from her tent into a nearby building and took bear spray into her tent. After returning to sleep, the coals were again awoken by noise at approximately 4.05 a.m., and they realized that Miss Lokan was being attacked by a bear. Ovando is a popular stop over along the Tour Divide, an annual self-supported bike race, and throughout the summer, thousands of bicyclists stop in Ovando to rest, camp for the night, or stay at the hotel and eat meals at the restaurants. The Tour Divide follows the Great Divide Mountain Bike Route, a 2,700-mile long route that is 90% off pavement along the Continental Divide. After going to bed earlier in the night, the Coles were awakened at approximately 3.08 a.m. by Miss Lokan crying out, Bear! Bear! The bear was several feet from the two tents exploring the area. At the time, Miss Lokan became alerted. Joe and Kim Cole both had Counter Assault brand bear spray with them in their tent. They woke up 
Joe grabbed Kim's bear spray, and they both began making noise. The bear walked off to the north, into the field area behind the Ovando store, and the bear spray was not used at the time. Miss Loken said, The bear huffed at my head, and then got up and moved two bags of food from her tent into a building known as the old jail at the museum, which was the building next door to the campsite, approximately 25 to 30 feet from her tent. She also took a can of Frontiersman brand bear spray into her tent. The Coles did not have any food in their tent. The Coles asked Miss Lokan if she wanted to stay in the hotel, but Miss Lokan stated, no. She wanted to stay in the tent. They all went back to bed. At approximately 4.05 a.m., Joe Cole was awoken again by a noise that made him realize Lokan was being attacked, although she had not yelled out. He immediately started yelling, Bear! Bear! He unzipped his tent while yelling in a roaring-like voice and deployed his bear spray as he crawled out of the tent. Kim followed him and began blowing her whistle. The dark shape of the bear was just on the other side of Lokan's tent pouncing up and down on Miss Lokan and her tent. As Joe approached, continuing to spray, the bear made eye contact with Joe, then averted its head as they approached closer, turned, and left. The back of the tent was still standing, but as they approached, they could see that Miss Lokan and the tent had been dragged by the bear approximately eight to 10 feet and Miss Lokan was half out of the tent and sleeping bag, showing no signs of life. The Coles immediately ran to the store to wake up guests for help. There is no way of knowing how much bear spray the bear received, nor what impact the bear spray may have had on the bear. However, it is obvious that the bear left the attack scene because of Joe's aggressive response and action. The bear made no attempt defend the body. Powell County coroners Lynette Renfro and Heather Gregory conducted the on-site examination of the victim and noted injuries on the victim included severe lacerations to her neck, head, shoulders, and back. The bear had not fed upon the victim. The coroners also collected a blue long sleeve shirt worn by the victim during the attack as evidence. There were numerous bite marks through the materials and rips from bites. The distance between canine teeth on the bite marks on the victim's shirt were two and a half inches. Two dried blueberry bags containing toiletries and other personal items were found inside the tent. The bags still had the scent of berries on them. No food was found in the tent during examination. Numerous food items, including beef jerky, crackers, seeds, trail mix, granola bars, electrolyte drink powder and tablets, and a baked potato wrapped in foil were found in the saddlebags of the victim's bicycle, which was leaning against the back wall of the museum, approximately 10 feet from the victim's tent. Examination of the tent revealed numerous bite marks and tears from the bear breaching the tent. The victim's journal and cell phone were collected from the tent footprint. A journal entry from July 2nd described that the victim practiced deploying bear spray after observing bear signs in and around the area where she was camping at Holland Lake near the town of Seely Lake, Montana. Also inside the tent was the safety retention tab for a can of bear spray, an almost completely empty can of Frontiersman bear spray spray, black with a white label, and missing the safety tab, was found under the tent. This can was assumed to be Loken's. The can had a fresh oily residue on the outside and had a strong odor suggesting it had been deployed the morning of the attack. While the attack scene was being processed, the rest of the response team began searching by foot and vehicle in and around the south side of Ovando in an attempt to locate the bear and to prevent it from coming back into town. Culvert traps, baited with deer and elk meat, were also placed at the scene of the fatality, and the immediate surrounding area was closed to the public. 
A trail camera was also set within view of the incident site to monitor for the bear and document any activity at the trap site. There were several reports of dogs barking southeast of town and north of town shortly after daybreak, and a lone grizzly bear was spotted several miles to the west of town around 9 a.m. At approximately 12 a.m. on July 9, 2021, a bear matching the description of the Ovando bear returned to where a chicken coop had been destroyed on July 8th. Wildlife agents shot and killed the large bear as it was actively destroying a chicken coop. The bear had been shot five times and the body was sent away for DNA sampling. This bear indeed turned out to be the one that killed Leah Loken. Prior to the death of Miss Loken, there had been no reported grizzly or black bear activity or conflicts in the town of Avando, Montana that year. After the event, there was an unverified rumor around town that the bear may have been in town several nights prior to the attack. On July 10th, however, two adult male grizzly bears were videotaped at a neighboring ranch approximately five miles to the north of Ovando. In that incident, the two grizzly bears were videoed at night on a remote camera after a chicken coop had been hit the night before. Both bears appeared to be young adult males in the 400 pound range. After this unfortunate incident, many recommendations were generated. In towns, communities, and municipalities assume that grizzly bears could be anywhere in western Montana, even in residential areas. Towns, communities, and counties should consider enacting food storage regulations or ordinances to reduce attractants on public and private lands throughout grizzly bear occupied range. Towns and communities in grizzly bear range should consider placing bear aware signs. Jeez, what do you guys think about that story? It's crazy how Leah, after the first encounter, kind of just blew off the situation. And even after her new friends offered for her to sleep in the hotel nearby, she still rejected the proposal. It's just crazy to think how if she would have taken them up on that, this incident never would have happened. But then again, maybe the bear would have attacked the other tent. But at least in that one, there was two people. And apparently they each had a can of bear spray for whatever the heck that is worth. It's Krikre how Leah actually had a can of it on her person as well, but it didn't seem to have much of an effect at all. And the investigators found that the thing was nearly emptied that night. So I just imagine the scene where this bear must have quickly barged into her tent. I wonder at what point did she think to haul that can out and spray it? Did she try to shoot away again? Or what actually happened? She must have sprayed it all over the damn place. But the bear prevailed and ripped her out of the damn tent. And then the other two came out and saw the bear on top of her, pressing onto her, just trying to pulverize her helpless body. She barely even screamed, according to witness accounts. It must have just taken her breath away. But yeah, what the hell? I mean, if she actually did spray it and it still didn't stop it, what was going on in that bear's mind? And apparently it didn't stick around to feed on her. Although, maybe that's what its plan was. I suppose we'll never know. But what do you guys think could have been done differently to avoid this situation? It seems like she was giving the bear too much leniency. If it were me in there, I feel like I'd be up all night after that incident with the bear spray in hand, just waiting for something to come near the tent. But of course, for any of you who have been watching this channel for a hot minute, you'd know that Iceman would have a hand cannon on his person, if I were to be in a situation like that. But let me know in the comments what you would have done differently. And I really appreciate you guys for coming by. So again, if you will, like this video, subscribe to the page, and stay tuned for more. Chilling Tales from the Iceman.